In the year 2000, a Nobel Prize was awarded for showing that plastics could be made to conduct electricity, specifically for work with conjugated polymers. But what are they, and how do they work? Well, in fact, conjugated polymers were stumbled across almost entirely by accident. A chemist named Shirakawa was attempting to control the amount of two different isomers of polyacetylene formed in a reaction. Usually, a black powder was produced, but when a thousand times more catalyst than usual was added by mistake, the silver-coloured film appeared, which was transpolyacetylene. This was not especially conductive, but combined with the minds of chemist Higa and McDiarmid, they were able to alter the reaction and increase the conductivity of the polyacetylene by 10 million times. This led to the development of conjugated polymers, plastics which conduct electricity. But what exactly are polymers? And what is conjugation? Well, polymers are long chains of atoms, commonly consisting of a carbon backbone with various side chains attached. You will be familiar with many of these, such as polystyrene, polythene, and even the non-stick pan-coating Teflon is a polymer, and so you will probably also be aware that plastics are generally electrical insulators. After all, plastic is wrapped around electrical wiring for this precise reason. In most polymers, the four outer electrons around the carbon atoms are all in sp3 hybridised orbitals. Each of these electrons is involved in a single covalent bond, leaving no free electrons, so no movement of charge can occur, and the polymer acts as an insulator. However, if instead of the four sp3 orbitals, we now have three electrons in sp2 orbitals, and one electron in the unhybridised pz orbital, we see a different arrangement of bonds. As before, each of the electrons in a hybridised orbital forms a single covalent bond, but the electron in the pz orbital of each carbon can form a second bond between them. This gives a chain of alternate single and double bonds, which are called conjugated double bonds. The electrons in a double bond are much less tightly bound, and so are more available to move. This is called the mesomeric effect, where the electron density in a molecule can be redistributed through the movement of electrons, and this can only arise in molecules that have conjugated bonds, and it are these mobile electrons which cause current to flow. Unfortunately, that's not the whole story. You have to do a bit more than that to win a Nobel Prize, I'm afraid. In order to increase its electrical conductance, the polymer must first be doped. There is P-doping, where an electron is removed in a process called oxidation, or N-doping, where an electron is added, called reduction. However, oxygen in the air reacts with N-doped polymers, and the added electron is lost again, so this method is not usually used. But either way, a mobile gap is created, enabling charge to flow. To help understand this, imagine those puzzle games where you try and complete the picture by sliding pieces into the empty space. The pieces can only be moved because there is an empty hole for them to be moved into. Now consider the pieces to be the electrons. They move into the gaps left behind by another electron, and this movement along the polymer chain is electric current. So, for example, iodine will remove an electron from a double bond, leaving a positive charge and an unpaired electron, or radical cation. This unpaired electron is now free to move towards the positive charge. This in turn leaves a positive gap at the carbon from where the lone electron came, and so you can see how an electron from the adjacent bond will then move to fill this. The movement of the gap shifts along the chain rapidly, as the position of the double bond successively moves along. And there we have it, a rapid movement of charge along the polymer, electrical conductivity in plastic. Doping a conjugated polymer significantly increases its conductivity, from being practically an insulator to being almost on a par with metals. For example, doping polyacetylene increases its conductance by 10 orders of magnitude. Even very small levels of doping can massively increase conductivity. And it was for this discovery, doping polyacetylene to drastically increase its conductivity, that won Higa, Shirakawa and McDiarmid the Nobel Prize. Well, so what if plastics can conduct electricity? Then the world of technology just gained another dimension. You may think some of these things belong in the pages of a sci-fi novel, but they are becoming increasingly more a part of reality. One of the most exciting properties of some conjugated polymers is that when current is passed through them, they emit light in a process called electroluminescence. This means the polymer can be used as an organic LED or OLED. Varying side groups on the polymer chain affects how the electrons move, which determines the colour of light emitted. In fact, by controlling the molecular structure, it is possible to produce any colour of LED. And why is this useful? Well, for example, your next television screen could consist of conjugated semiconductive polymers arranged in layers, which glow when current is passed through. The screen would be incredibly thin and would be flexible enough to be rolled up. 
Current limitations to these screens are their lifespan. For LCD plasmas, about 50,000 hours is typical, whereas OLEDs last for a comparatively few 14,000. Even so, research is improving these figures, the best so far coming from Mitsubishi, with a screen 4 metres wide with a lifespan of 20,000 hours. It is therefore no exaggeration to say that other light displays could be made from these luminescent plastics, such as mobile phones, traffic signs and computer screens. It is even plausible that conjugated polymers could be put to use as wallpaper, light emitting wallpaper, why not? It's cheap, light and can be made into large flat sheets. After all, the Philips invention Luma blades is only a short step away. Electrodes pass current through layers of semiconducting polymers, causing them to emit light and these flexible panels are energy efficient so don't lose heat like traditional lighting. But why stop there? If these polymers can emit light when current is passed through them, then is it possible that if light were to shine on them, a current could be produced? Achieving electroluminescence in reverse is the initiative for the development of solar cells. If made from conjugated polymers, the solar cell would be flexible and could be spread over bigger surface areas, providing renewable energy for a low cost. Not just your house, but even your car could soon be painted in such a photovoltaic coating, transferring light energy into electricity as you drive. And of course we all know the environmental and financial benefits of generating power without having to rely on fossil fuels. One type of conjugated polymer, polyaniline, has anti-static properties due to its ability to conduct electricity. This makes it an ideal material for use as a plastic carpet in operating theatres. Polyaniline can also prevent rust by accepting an electron from the metal it is coated on and passing it to oxygen in the air. Zinc was the usual coating, however this only delays corrosion and must be regularly reapplied. Here, the conjugated polymer is the clear winner. Many electronic gadgets are based on silicon, but this too is starting to be succeeded by conductive polymers. Components with the polymer integrated circuits are smaller than those with silicon, as well as being quicker and cheaper to produce, and they can be used in applications such as smart cards and product tagging. Imagine how much simpler things would be if, instead of scanning each and every item from your shopping trolley at the checkout, these tags could automatically be recognised and all you have to do is pay. All sorts of electronic devices that currently use inorganic semiconductors can also be replaced with conjugated polymers, and that is why research is increasingly favouring them as the more cost-effective and environmentally friendly alternative. So there you have it, conjugated polymers, electrically conducting plastics. Despite being discovered by accident, further research into them earned three men a Nobel Prize, and now their potential uses are being tapped in a whole variety of applications. Conducting polymers are set to be the material of the future, capable of using and producing electrical energy cleanly and efficiently. And now you know why.